So let's now take a look at the basic elements of a computer system. So the first question to ask is, what is a computer? And it's just simply a device that can perform commands. Now, there are a variety of different types of commands that a computer can do these days. But for our purposes, we're just going to look at a couple of basic commands. So first, it can perform some type of input or some way of getting data. So whether that's through typing stuff on the keyboard or the mouse, and we'll talk about some different input devices in a little bit, but we have some way of getting data. Uh, it also needs to perform some type of output. So once we've gotten some inputs and we've done some calculations, uh, we need to be able to output stuff. We need to be able to see what the computer is doing. So we need to have a way of performing output or displaying the results. We also need to be able to store information. I mean, a computer is not very useful if we can't hang on to our files. And then the last basic operation we'll look at is just that it can perform some type of operations. So it can do arithmetic operations. So it can do addition, subtraction. It could do logical operations. So it can allow us to do comparisons. Uh, it can allow us to check for things like equality. So it can do all sorts of operations for us. Now the computer itself can be broken up into two main components. So the first one is simply the, the hardware of the computer. And then the second one would be the software. We'll focus on the hardware first. So the first major device um, that we need to consider is the central processing unit, or as you probably know as the CPU. Uh, we can think of this as the brain of our computer, and it is the most important and most expensive piece of hardware. Now you could make a claim if you're trying to beef up your computer that you can get an improved graphics card or add some more RAM or your motherboard, but in terms of not necessarily the price, but in terms of the value of the computer or the importance of it, this is the key um, part of it. Your computer is not going to be able to do anything without the CPU. Now, a more powerful CPU simply applies that we have a faster computer. So I mean, nowadays we're getting like dual core, quad core. Now we're seeing octo core type CPUs where they become more powerful. It allows us to do more instructions very quickly. It allows things to run faster. So in fact, if some of you are interested in gaming, you probably have looked into more powerful CPUs in order for your games to run a lot faster and be more efficient. And of course, this is where all of our arithmetic and logical operations are performed. So all of the work in our machine is done in the CPU. Now, the other important piece of hardware, and I mean, there are several others, but the main memory would be the next most important part. Uh, sometimes we also call this the random access memory or the RAM. And this memory is connected directly to our CPU. So before we can run any program, it has to be loaded into main memory first. And in fact, if we want to do any changes to our data, it also must be loaded in main memory before we can have a program make changes to it. So when you run a program and maybe it changes a file on your, on your computer, you may think that the program is directly changing that file, but that's not true. What's actually happening is first, your program is being loaded into your memory and then it starts running. And then the file that you're going to change that gets loaded into main memory as well. All the changes are done there. And then the file gets sent back and stored into your disk drive. But any changes that we want to do to our files must be done through the main memory. And we can think of our main memory as a temporary storage device. So if the power goes out or your computer shuts down or someone decides to just turn off the power on your computer, be very mean, but they can do that. If there was anything in your main memory at the time that gets lost. So if you've worked on like on a paper, for example, and maybe the power went out and everything shut down and you rebooted and all that stuff you did was lost because you didn't save it. That's because all that was stored in main memory. Now we can think of our memory as being arranged as this sequence of cells and we call each of these cells a memory cell. And then each of these memory cells contains a unique location, which we call an address. So let's take a look at a simple example of how our memory could be laid out. So here's one such example. So what we have here is this set of contents. So we have all of our data in here 
and every single cell in here and the data that's in these cells uh, can either be instructions it could be some kind of data it could be several different things and then we also have an address for each of these memory cells so we can think of this, these as a unique location for each of the, this data and here in our example we have addresses 0 to 999 but realistically we have a lot more than a thousand addresses available to us now it's important to note that each uh, cell and the data that's stored in there is a sequence of zeros and ones so like if we store negative 26 here for example this right here we don't actually store the negative sign a two and a six it's actually stored as a sequence of zeros and ones and because that's the only way that the machine can actually read values in our memory and then it's up to the program to be able to interpret those zeros and ones to determine what the actual data is so give me an example uh, we might have like zero zero one zero zero one one zero that's actually stored in a memory cell now we have additional devices available to us than just the cpu and our main memory so because if we store something in main memory we can lose it we need to have a place where we can actually store our files on a more long-term basis so this is where we can take advantage of secondary storage so any device that can actually store files in a more permanent basis would be a secondary storage device now these devices have to be directly connected to the main memory in order to transfer data between the main memory and the storage device so you can plug them into your computer which is plugged to your motherboard and that's plugged in connected to the main memory so there are several different types of secondary storage devices so there's hard disks floppy disks flash memory zip disks cd-roms tapes dvds usbs so there's all sorts of different types of devices out there that can store uh, these files now if we want to actually do anything meaningful with this data that we store uh, we need to be able to read in data and be able to read in programs as well and be able to display the results properly so we, there are such devices that take care of that so if we have devices that will uh, read in data it'll bring in programs to the computers we call these input devices so such examples include the keyboard the mouse the microphone and some types of secondary storage so any type of hardware device that sends information into the computer we would call that an input device and then any device that would actually output the results of your data or your programs would be considered output devices and there are several of those types as well so i mean there are monitors that would display the results on the screen printers would print out your data and other types of secondary storage devices as well so let me give you an example of kind of how all these components are laid out together so what we would have here is in our main computer so this will be this part right here is our main computer and inside of it would contain our cpu and our main memory and you can see that they are interacting with each other so i mean the cpu does all the work and in order to get that data it gets the information from the main memory itself and then if we are trying to do some type of computation we may have an input device where we take data and we would uh, place that into our our memory and then it does some stuff with it and then when we're done processing that data uh, we put that data back in the main memory and maybe we store that into some type of output device so maybe we print that result or we may actually uh, transfer data between the secondary devices so I mean this is kind of how our our CPU or computer would be laid out so that's enough with hardware and let's talk about software now so what is software well it's basically programs that we write that will tell the computer to perform different types of tasks and there are two particular types of uh, programs that we're going to be taking a look at we'll, we'll talk about system programs and application programs so well, what are system programs they basically control the computer so they tell the computer to do different things with hardware devices because I mean the hardware is just going to sit there and do nothing unless we have a program that tells it to do something uh, so the first program that's actually loaded into our system is the operating system and you should be familiar with operating systems I mean 
you've probably seen uh, Windows, you've worked with Windows, uh, you work with Macs. Some of you may have even worked with the Linux operating system, but we're basically talking about a program that monitors the activity of our computer and it provides different types of services. So we're talking about things such as memory management. It takes care of handling our input output devices. Uh, it'll even take care of storing files for us. So it does all that work for us. We just have to have the program tell the computer to do these things, but the operating system will take care of how to go about doing these types of operations. And then the operating system in itself is a program that will also run the application programs. So, well, what is an application program? Well, the application program will simply perform different types of tasks. So these are things that the user usually interacts the computer with. So several examples of these include word processors, spreadsheets, and even games.